Are we? Yeah, that definitely clipped the microphone. <laughs> Hello everyone out there in the YouTubes. My name is Cadence. This is my corner. This is my coffee? My coffee is inside this little shaker for human fuel, which is uh, a meal replacement product that I'm trying out at the moment. It's uh, interesting. Um, and yeah, I know I'm wearing the t-shirt, but I swear I'm not sponsored, all right? This is the star of today's show. This is the Studio Project's C1. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's uh, It has a single diaphragm, so it's a cardioid microphone. No omnidirectional or figure of eight or anything like that. However, you can buy the Studio Project's C3, which has three polar patterns. Funnily enough, it's got cardioid, figure of eight, and omnidirectional. But this one is just a cardioid microphone. So, one of the first things you'll notice if you pick up a Studio Project C1 is that, wow, this microphone is huge. <laughs> In fact, it's even bigger than the SC2200A Mark II, which is also a very large microphone. It's wider in diameter, it's longer, it's... I'm not sure if it's heavier. See, how heavy is it? It's about 610 grams in weight, so it is a fairly heavy microphone. Now, the Studio Project C1 is interesting because there's been a number of iterations of this microphone over the years. Specifically, uh, three revisions have been uh, identified. Uh, by uh, microphone parts, and I'll return to microphone parts later in this video. So this is version number two of this microphone. So what does that mean? Well, the branding on this microphone says Studio Project, but it also has a little logo at the bottom that says 797 Audio. Now 797 Audio is kind of a curious company. It's a Chinese-based company, and it's kind of the exception to the rule when it comes to <coughs> pretty good. It's kind of the exception to the rule when it comes to capsules, microphone capsules coming out of China, because 797 Audio has been revered by many for a long time for making some of the best microphone capsules uh, that you can possibly find in a Chinese microphone. This is a Chinese made microphone. It's made by 797 Audio and it features one of their capsules. So as far as I know, the three iterations that have that have existed of this microphone all of them are made by 797 audio but don't quote me on that i'm not sure if the latest version is actually made by 797 audio i've i've heard that all three of them contain the same k67 style capsule though so you should be able to buy any studio project c1 and at least know that you're getting a a proper microphone capsule um, but yeah, as said, this is the second version with the 797 audio branding. The first version is very similar to this one, except it did not have this. Where is it? There you go. This little switch at the back. So this three-way switch at the back uh, can switch the microphone from its completely normal mode um, uh, into a minus 10 dB pad or a high-pass filter at uh, 150 hertz at 6 decibels per octave. You can only choose one though, you can't have the pad and the high-pass filter on at the same time. If you have the newest version of the Studio Project C1, you will be able to, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So this particular version of the C1 has a self-noise level of 17 decibels A-weighted, it's got a maximum uh, SPL uh, of 142 decibels, so pretty good, pretty good. Um, and that's really all there is to say about it, I suppose. Uh, if we compare it to the other versions, um, on the red badge version of the microphone, uh, I saw that the maximum SPL was listed as 131 decibels SPL. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this means, essentially, that the red badge version will be able to handle 131 decibels SPL when none of the pads are engaged, but as you engage the minus 10 dB pad, you'll get up to 141 decibels SPL, which is obviously very close to the 142 maximum decibel SPL that this microphone can handle. So I'm assuming that it's pretty much exactly the same microphone, but on the page for this one, the maximum SPL is being counted as 
um, the maximum SPL of the microphone when the minus 10 dB pad is engaged, whereas on the red batch version of the microphone, they count it without the pad switches. On the red batch version, you do have a minus 10 dB pad and a minus 20 dB pad, so you'll actually be able to handle, theoretically, as far as I can tell, up to 151 decibels uh, of sound pressure level on the red batch version with the minus 20 dB pad enabled. In addition to those, uh, 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 those um, additional pad uh, switches that you have on the red batch version, you also have a uh, high pass uh, filter switch, which is separate, so you can have both the pads and the high pass filter on at the same time. And in addition to the 150 hertz 6 decibel per octave high pass filter, the red batch version also has a 75 hertz 6 decibel per octave filter. So you have some more options with the red batch version, uh, but I specifically wanted to get one of the old 797 audio versions, mostly because I'm not entirely sure uh, about the capsule in the new red badge version. Is it really the same capsule as in the old ones? I'm not really sure about that. If someone can confirm, that would be awesome. Now some say that the red badge version, i.e. the latest iteration of this microphone, is less bright than the previous versions. However, if you look at a frequency response plot uh, of these various different microphones, you'll notice that they look identical. So I'm inclined to believe that they sound exactly the same. This is just something I've heard on the interwebs, you know. Don't trust everything you see on the internet, guys. Including me, because I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> let's talk about how this microphone sounds. So, this microphone is really bright. You might already have noticed that it's kind of sibilant sounding. Whenever I say any words or sounds that include S or T or F, um, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. And this makes sense if you look at the frequency uh, response graph here. Um, with that said, with the microphone being as bright as it is, I don't think it's a bad microphone. In fact, um, there's a lot of potential in this microphone. And it's actually the reason why I bought this microphone. So it has a, a, a nice, smooth-sounding, detailed low-end and mid uh, mids in general, um, and the high end is just kind of too hyped. So what can you do about it? Well, this is where microphone parts comes into the picture. If you go to microphone-parts.org, is that right? I'll put it on the I'll put it on the video somewhere. You can buy one of these, and as you can see, I actually already have one of these. Well, what is this? This is a U87 EQ mod kit for Studio Project C1. So what you do here is essentially you have a little circuit board. And you got a f ton of components and a little guide for how to solder all of this sh together. So what you do is you solder it all together, solder it into the microphone, and now you have a high pass roll, or excuse me, a high frequency roll, excuse me about it, good lord. <laughs> you have a high frequency roll off, which essentially makes the, uh, this microphone makes the frequency response of it practically identical to a Neumann U87. And I gotta say, when I was on microphone dash parts, .org. They listed some samples of their modified C1 against an actual Neumann U87, and I couldn't hear the difference. I was a little bit amazed. Um, for those of you who don't know, the U87 costs, what, $2,500? It's a, it's a really expensive piece of gear that the vast majority of people just can't afford. So if you want a U87-esque sound, you can buy a Studio Project C1. You can have a look at the used market, see if you can find one. If you can't, you can just buy a brand new red batch version. And then buy your little U87 EQ mod kit here. Um, and, you know, if you know how to solder, then you're good to go. I'm not a soldering expert by any means, but I think that I should be able to do this mod without too many issues. Uh, if you don't have any experience with soldering and you don't want to dabble with that, I was about to say dab, good lord. <laughs> If you don't want to dabble with that stuff, you can send your microphone to the guys at Microphone Parts and have them do it for you, for a price premium, of course. Um, so this is going to be really interesting. Unfortunately, I don't own a U87 that I can directly compare it to when I've done the mod, but I will report back to you guys and give you another video uh, on, well, specifically the Studio Project C1 with the EQ mod installed, uh, and we'll we'll take a look at it then. All in all, this is a really great microphone that's 
too sibilant and too harsh and too bright for its own good because it has so much potential in the in the very microphone capsule itself uh, that it's it's a shame it's a shame that studio projects didn't do more with this thing uh, because they really could have created a contender for the U87 and back when this microphone was released in 2001 I believe I think it was at NAM I'm not sure don't quote me on that but at some convention somewhere it was being compared to the U87 a lot and back then in 2001 there weren't a lot of affordable condensers on the market that actually sounded any good <laughs> but this one's been around for a long time and it's just a single modification away from sounding like a $2,500 microphone, supposedly. We're going to find out next time, maybe. I mean, I know I said last time that next time, which is this time, was going to be the newer NW700 processing video and stuff. I got it for my birthday, and I'm really itching to install it, but I wanted to do a video on the stock Studio Project C1 first, so that's why. <laughs> um, but anyway, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you found this video useful in some sense. Um, and, um, well, I'll see you next time when either we do something with the newer NW700 or we take a look at the Studio Project C1 with the U87 EQ mod from microphone-parts.com. It is .com. Off. I completely lost track of where I was in that sentence. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up. Gotta get my gotta get my food here. And uh, you guys have a good one. All right. See you later. Hashtag not sponsored. I swear. Okay.